Gail Jones. <laughs> okay, I see several people. Uh, I am a great fan of Game of Thrones. Uh, it's one of my favorite series. And uh, actually, I'm not the only one. It's the most popular series in the world right now, I think. And it's also the most pirated series in the world. Um, so, as I said, I'm a huge fan. For example, um, I always cross the dates on my calendar when, in, when a new episode will be released. So, for example, three years ago, uh, in 2015, I crossed uh, the dates in April for every new episode of Game of Thrones. Uh, the 13th, 20th, 27th, every week there was a new episode. But um, before the release date of the first episode, on the 12th of April, I looked on the internet and I already saw that the first four episodes were illegally leaked on the Pirate Bay. So I had to make a decision between uh, downloading these four episodes illegally and then having to wait five weeks to watch the next episode. Or I could wait and watch one episode per week. Um, but then risk being spoiled by my friends who did watch these episodes illegally and without any spoilers because yeah, they are my friends. Um, so don't worry, I will not tell any Game of Thrones uh, spoilers uh, in this presentation. Um, but let's investigate these uh, leaked episodes. So this is the introduction of one of them. And in the lower left corner we can see something strange. Well, uh, there is a, some kind of blurred area in there. And that is, that is because this video was watermarked. Uh, these were actually screener episodes that were sent to the press before the official release date so that they could write a review about, um, about these episodes and post the review online on the date of release. Um, and so in the, the lower left corner there was some visible watermark. So for example the reviewer ID so that if the reviewer would leak the video on the internet he or she could be identified by this watermark. However, because it was such a simple visible watermark the reviewer could simply blur this watermark, making him or her unidentifiable. So that's why I started thinking, can't we still detect who leaked the video even if he removed uh, this visible watermark? So I want to perform the trailer tracing after removing the visible watermark. So my name is Hans Marin from Ghent University, uh, and I hope you will enjoy my presentation about uh, my technique. So let's first go over some video encoding, encoding basics. When we have an uncompressed video, the quality is very good, uh, although yeah, the projector makes the quality a bit less good. Um, but so for example, for one uh, episode of Game of Thrones from one hour, uh, we would need around 300 gigabytes, which is way too much for a 1080p uh, episode. So we compress the video, for example, to only one gigabyte, where the quality is actually kind of the same as the uncompressed video. As a human, we don't really see the difference although there are actually many small mistakes being made. So this is the difference between the uncompressed and the compressed video, and we see that there are actually many small mistakes being made, especially around the edges. Uh, so we can still even see Game of Thrones in there. Um, and the video encoder does this by uh, dividing every frame of the video into smaller blocks, and then uh, using every block for the prediction of neighboring blocks, both spatially and temporally, for example, using motion vectors and intra-prediction modes. Uh, in HTVC, for example. So this is the vis visualization of the block structure and the motion vectors, etc. Um, and the thing is, um, so we have this compressed video. Um, now what changes when we add a watermark in there? Well, we simply add the visible watermark and we also perform compression. But the thing is, not the only difference is this visible watermark, although as a human, we on the only difference we see is this, this visible watermark. But actually, uh, the coding decisions also change. So these are the coding decisions for the watermark video, and these are the coding decisions for an ordinarily compressed video. And if I go back and forth, you can see that they change, especially around the visible watermark uh, region. Um, and this goes further that um, the compression artifacts made in the watermark video are actually different than those made in the compressed video. So here are the, the compression artifacts of the watermark video, and here they are uh, of the compressed video. So if I go back and forth, you can see that not only the watermark region is different because it is in red, it's the, the main difference, but there are also small, diff uh, small differences between uh, the edges of uh, everything. And then this is a, another visualization of actually the difference between the watermark and compressed video. This is that. So there is a lot of uh, other new information in this watermark video apart from only the, the visibly uh, watermarked area. Um, so if uh, we summarize this, we have the normally uncompressed video. Uh, we can compress this and we make some small mistakes. Uh, we can also watermark this, so add a watermark and compress it, and we make some small mistakes. 
But the difference between that is actually an extra watermark that was indirectly created by the video encoder. So there are ordinary uh, encoder-created compression artifacts, but we can use that as an alternative watermark representation. So uh, moreover, if we have watermark number 01, we have certain compression artifacts. And if we have watermark number 02, we have again certain compression artifacts. But the thing is that these compression artifacts are again different. So each unique visible watermark will create a unique uh, alternative watermark uh, in, in the, as compression artifacts. So this is great. We can use this. Uh, this is again a visualization of the differences. And the main difference you can see is the 1 and the 2 overlapping in the lower left corner, because this is, of course, the main difference. But there are also many differences around the edges. Uh, so now, let's say yeah, one of those videos was leaked on the Pirate Bay. We download it, and we see that yeah, the visible watermark is covered, in this case by a black box. So now, how do we know who leaked the video? Well, it's very simple. We, we have this uh, pirated attacked video, and we have, let's say, 100 watermarked videos that from each video we know uh, who we distributed it to. We simply calculate correlation between watermark number one and the attacked video, number two, number three. We do this for all the 100 watermarks. We have some correlation values, we can plot them in a graph, and we can see that one correlation value is clearly higher than all of the other correlation values. And then we can say this is a detected watermark. So in this case, uh, the person who, who received watermark number 50 is actually the person that leaked this episode. Although, as a human, we could not identify him because there was a black box over watermark number 50. So let's go over some more concrete results. Uh, for my tests, I uh, watermarked the videos uh, with 100 different watermarks with ID 0 to 99. I made the watermark a bit less strong. I embedded it in the lower right corner with a 50% transparent text. And then I performed compression with uh, quantization parameters, so QPs, uh, between 22 and 37, where a QP of 22 is a high quality, uh, although uh, blowing, this is the, the test sequence blowing bubble that is uh, often used in video compression. It has a very low resolution, so it is on large here, so the quality may not even seem that good, but it's actually good quality. Uh, and then we have a QP of 37, where the quality is really bad, and I think you can see that the quality is actually bad, and it's kind of the worst you can expect to receive um, to watch a video. Uh, then these are the, the unique compression artifacts. Uh, so to say from the watermark embedded uh, in a video with QP 22, and we can see that um, the differences, they stay in this uh, plot. Uh, more in the green yellowish area, so the differences are not huge, but they are there and they are spread over the entire video. Um, but when we watermark with a QP of 37, uh, then the quality is worse, and we see many more areas in red, which means that um, yeah, there are huge differences between uh, this video and ordinary compressed video, which means that the watermark is present more strongly. So afterwards, we, I attacked uh, every of those watermarked videos for every of the QPs during watermarking. So I uh, placed the black box over the visible watermarked area. And then I re-encoded them using new quantization parameters, even going uh, to a very bad quality with a QP of 47. So again, a QP of 22 would receive a result in a video like this that still is a very good quality. Uh, but with a QP of 47, yeah, it's really a bad video. And you could ask the question, uh, would anybody even want to download an episode of Game of Thrones if it was leaked, but it had this quality? Well, I don't think so. Um, and then I calculated the detection rate, which is simply dividing the total number of uh, true positive detections uh, by the, the total number of detections. So very simple to have a, a percentage of correctly watermarked videos in this experiment. So for example, when we encode the watermark video with a high quality, so with a QP of 22, we can see that it is Robust if, we, if the attacker does not decrease the quality uh, by a lot. So if he re-encodes a video with a QP of 22, we can still de correctly detect all the watermarks. But as soon as he uh, increases the QP, so decreases the quality, we cannot really uh, detect the watermark anymore. Now if uh, with a QP of 27, we uh, encoded the video, the watermark video, then it is more robust. The attacker can already go up to a QP of 32, while we still have 100% detection rate. And the more we decrease the quality of the watermark video uh, as a watermarking distributor, um, the, well, the more robust it is against attacks. So even uh, when we uh, distribute the video with a QP of 37, where I showed before that there were more compression artifacts shown in red, so they are more heavily present, uh, it is more robust up to a QP of, uh, 
the encoding impact of wave PD is 42. So that's quite a good result. Um, but now for the sequence traffic, which is another sequence and low and double that I showed before, it doesn't work. So all the detection rates are under 5%, which is really uh, just random. Uh, it's really bad. So let's investigate why this is. Uh, so the watermark was embedded in the lower right corner, and here in traffic, that, though, that is where the trees are, and the trees barely move. And the thing in visual compression is, so uh, every region is, um, is, uh, um, is, every region is used for the prediction of neighboring regions, but those neighboring regions, yeah, they have to be similar, otherwise you wouldn't use them for prediction. And, uh, around the trees, we suddenly have a street, so the streets will barely use those trees for their prediction. So the thing is that those unique compression artifacts, they stay kind of in that region of trees, because yeah, th that region is similar to each other, but not similar to the rest. So there is very few watermark information present. So I tried to move the watermark to a region with more motion, uh, where it would spread better, for example, in the middle of the frame. Uh, you can't see it very clearly, but it's right there with the, the dot. Uh, and then we can see that, yeah, compression artifacts, they spread much better, they spread over the entire video, and we already get some better results. Um, so this means that, yeah, the, the watermark uh, strongness is dependent on uh, the position of the watermark. It should be embedded in a video with enough motion, uh, and also in a region of that video with enough motion that uh, can spread through the entire video. But if we think a standard Game of Thrones episode is uh, 45 minutes to one hour, so uh, there will certainly be a small segment uh, where there is enough motion where the watermark is also in such a region. So if we summarize this, I showed that uh, embedding a visible watermark in a video does not only have an effect on that small area, it also has an effect on the whole video uh, with unique compression artifacts. And um, detecting uh, a watermark based on this alternative watermarking representation, well, it works. Uh, but under certain uh, conditions, the pirate should not significantly reduce the quality of the video, especially if the uh, video was encoded with uh, a low PP, so with a high quality, then it is not super robust, but already a little bit robust. And uh, the watermark should be embedded in a video and in a region within that video that has sufficient motion. So that was it. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask them now. You can also contact me after the session and send me an email. Uh, send me an invite on LinkedIn, please. Uh, and I'm happy to answer them. Uh, thank you. storage that is necessary, but in the end, if you know the parameters that were used to create these watermark videos, you just have to store the original one and then you can encode them on the fly and compare them. But, um, you know, uh, an attacker would not just do something simple like this? Well, uh, as I showed in the beginning, uh, this was actually a real practical example that the episodes were leaked like this. So there was just a simple blur, and then he re-encoded it, and he lowered the quality. Okay, but if, uh, if there was, I, I would, if this went out and yeah. was reported, mm -hmm. I think in the future, people who do, uh, would not uh, distribute it this way. Yeah. You know, there's uh, attack, various attack, collusion of attack, I don't know if you heard yeah, of it. Yeah, you take the average of all the watermarks, mm -hmm. you know, and you do this, and then you take the average, and then you yeah, send it out, right? Well, I would not recommend anyone to use visible watermarks, uh, but if somebody used this in the past, then I can come and I can try to help them. But I would still not recommend in the future to anyone use this. I don't want to use this technique on new videos because uh, it is a very bad technique to add a visible watermark. But uh, I just showed that it has uh, some more robustness than you might think. 
So it would not be robust in the, against yeah, more strong attacks like collusion attacks and so on. Um, so yeah, uh, but it, it's yeah, just from the perspective yeah. of an attacker. Yeah, I mean to do something like this would be stupid. Yeah, would be bad, yeah. but yeah, so to embed the visible watermark is also stupid. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's kind of stupid versus stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean people are <laughs> so. If you don't have a degree in computer science, you, you don't know about it, right? Okay. So, um, yeah. Or, okay. Yeah, that's it. Uh, so, for now, that uh, Niagara affects how you go on the computer. But I think uh, this research is going to be tended to go more professional. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I would think so. episodes that I showed to reviewers. So mainly they are very, um, yeah, not, a, not a lot of watermarked videos, I think. Moreover, we can do this for small segments of like 10 seconds. So uh, comparing yeah, hundreds or thousands of videos can be done in hours, uh, basically. Um, also, we can speed up the process. I didn't show this in my paper, but I started this research last month by only looking at some more um, more important parts of the video, like some, some low frequency uh, coefficients of the watermark signal, and this greatly speeds up the process, and it even gives better results, uh, but I still have to investigate it a bit more deeply. Yeah. I have a question. Um, since the watermark is uh, visible, I guess that uh, nobody uh, would watch Sputnik in the middle of the, yeah. uh, of the screen. So, uh, if the attacker decides to crop the image. Mm -hmm. uh, cropped image, of course, uh, would be different from the original one, mm -hmm. but uh, I guess you cannot detect the original of the document, right? Uh, well, in that case, uh, I would require that all the watermark videos are uh, performing the same crop. So there would be some human investigating which crop was used. Maybe also if there were some other geometric attacks, like rotation, scaling, whatever. That's some human or some image registration techniques. They investigate which, uh, yeah, which attacks were, were performed. And then it would perform all the same attacks on all of the watermarks and then perform the, the same correlation. And this should also require good results. Thank you. Any more questions? 